Chapter 5 The Holy Name as a Mystery of Salvation Save me, O God, by thy name. Psalm 54, verse 1 The name of Jesus brings us more than his presence. Jesus is present in his name as Savior. For the word Jesus means just this, Savior or salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Jesus began his early earthly mission by healing and forgiving, i.e. by saving men. In the same manner, the very beginning of the way of the name is the knowledge of our Lord as our personal Savior. The invocation of the name brings deliverance to us in all our necessities. The name of Jesus not only helps us to obtain the fulfillment of our needs, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive. John 16, 23 through 24. But the name of Jesus already supplies our needs. When we require the succor of our Lord, we should pronounce his name in faith and hope, believing that we already receive it, in it what we ask for. Jesus himself is the supreme satisfaction of all men's needs, and he is that now as we pray. Let us not regard our prayer in relation to fulfillment in the future, but in relation to fulfillment in Jesus now. He is more than the giver of what we and others need. He is also the gift. He is both giver and gift, containing in himself all good things. If I hunger, he is my food. If I am cold, he is my warmth. If I am ill, he is my health. If I am persecuted, he is my deliverance. If I am, am impure, he becomes my purity. He is made unto us righteousness and sanctification and redemptions. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. This is quite another thing than if he had merely given them to us. Now we may find in his name all that he is. Therefore, the name of Jesus, insofar as it links us with Jesus himself, is already a mystery of salvation. The name of Jesus brings victory and peace when we are tempted. A heart already filled with the nature and presence of our Lord would not let in any simple image our thought. But we are weak, and often our defenses break down and then temptation rises within us like angry waters. In such case, do not consider the temptation. Do not argue with your own desire. Do not think upon the storm. Do not look at yourself. Look at our Lord, clinging to him. Call upon his holy name. When Peter, walking upon the waters to come to Jesus, saw the tempest, he was afraid. Matthew 14:30, and began to sink. If instead of looking at the waves and listening to the wind, we single-heartedly walk upon the waters towards Jesus, he will stretch forth his hand and take hold of us. The name may then be of great use, as it is a definite, concrete, and powerful shape, able to resist the strong imagery of temptation. When tempted, call upon the holy name, persistently, but quietly and gently. Do not shout it, nor say it with anxiety or passion. Let it penetrate the soul little by little, till all thoughts and feelings come together and coalesce around it. Let it exercise its power of polarization. It is the name of the Prince of Peace, it must be invoked in peace, and then it will bring us peace, or, better still, it will, like him whose symbol it is, be our peace.
The name of Jesus brings forgiveness and reconciliation. When we have grievously sinned, and so much the more when we have sinned slightly, we can, without one second, cling to the holy name with repentance and charity, and pronounce it with our whole heart, and the name thus used, and through which we have reached the person of Christ, will already be a token of pardon. After sin, let us not hang about, delay, and linger. Let us not hesitate to take up again the invocation of the name, in spite of our unworthiness. A new day is breaking, and Jesus stands on the shore. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord Jesus, he cast himself into the sea. John 21.7 Act like Simon. Say Jesus as though beginning life afresh. We sinners shall find our Lord anew at the invocation of his name. He comes to us at that moment, and as we are, he begins again where he has left us, or rather, where we have left him. When he appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, he came to them as they were unhappy and lost and guilty and, without reproaching them with their past defection, he simply entered anew into their everyday life. He said unto them, Have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. Luke 24 41-42 41 through 42. In the same manner, when we say Jesus again after an act of sin or a period of estrangement, he does not require from us long apologies for the past, but he wants us to mix as before his person and his name with the detail and routine of our life with our broiled fish and our honeycomb and to replunge them into the very middle of our existence. Thus the holy name can bring about reconciliation after our actual sins. But it can give us a more general and fundamental experience of the divine forgiveness. We can pronounce the name of Jesus and put into it the whole reality of the cross, the whole mystery of the atonement. If we link the name with faith in Jesus as propitiation for the sins of all men, we find in the Holy Name the sign of redemption extended to all times and to the whole universe. Under this name we find the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13.8, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1.29. All this does not gainsay or tend to lessen the objective means of penitence and remission of sins offered to us by the church. We are here only concerned with the hidden life of the soul. What we have in view is the inner absolution which repentance produced by charity already obtains. The absolution which the publican received after his prayer in the temple and of which the gospel says, this man went down to his house justified. Luke 18, 14.